Morning, family. Uh, I, I remember when uh, I arrived here in Australia, it was like a one, uh, one week. We had a friend in Saratoga. Rochelle and I, we went to visit him. And, oh, hi, Rochelle, someone's. <laughs> and I was sitting down. I was a little bit tired. It was really hot. And I saw that friend came to me and said, do you want kappa? <laughs> and then I said, in my mind, this must be cappuccino. And then I said to him, yes, I want cappuccino. And then he said, no, I don't do cappuccino here. And then I was like, why do you asking me for kappa when you don't have cappuccino? <laughs> and I saw my wife, Rochelle, was really laughing at me. <laughs> then I, I didn't know what was going on. Then Rochelle said to me, no, kappa can be coffee, kappa can be tea, cup of tea or cup of coffee. Then I was like, it's not cappuccino then. <laughs> then I said to him, yes, I will have a cup of coffee. <laughs> it sounds like cappuccino to me. Thanks for the presentation, Sam. We are so blessed by that. But family, I would like you to open your Bible because the Bible is the final authority as we believe in this world. But before we read the scripture and go through, but let's read quickly. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. It goes like this. When I came to you, brothers... I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in the weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with a wise and persuasive word, but with a demonstration of the spirit power, so that your faith may not rest in man's wisdom, but on God's power. This is the Apostle Paul. He came to the city of Corinth. The city of Corinth was very wealthy. This city, they had everything. But this city was lost. There was idol worshipping. There was a lot of things which did not please to God. But they still had everything in that city of Corinth. But before we go there, family, I want to tell you something. In the world, this world that we live today, there are 7 billion of population. Among the 7 billion of population, there are 3.5 billion. They've never heard about Jesus before. And there are 3,500 of a people group. They have their own language. They have their own culture. They have their own way of doing things. But they have no contact with the Bible. No contact with the Bible. You come to them, you say, verse 1, they have no clue what you are talking about. That's what was really good when you speak about the, the Bible, the final authority. This is guiding us. As Spencer was sharing through the Bible, shaping his life. But in this morning, there are people, three and a half thousand of people who have no contact Three and a half thousand of people group, they have no contact with the living word of God. That is serious to me. It's very serious. Family, you and I, as we are here this morning, we believe, we believe that Jesus is the only way to the Father. He said, no one can come to me except passing through me. But there are people who have no 
have never seen the Bible before. They have no contact with Jesus. That is serious. But as you are listening to this, you may ask yourself, what can I do? What can I do to make it different in this world? What can I do to make it different? I will tell you, win souls. And the message that I have today for you is winning souls. That is a message I have for you. But we are going to see through the life of the Apostle Paul, through his ministry and how he was doing so that we can learn from him. And I'm going to give you three points in this morning. Point number one, the method. We see the Apostle Paul's method, verse one. Listen to what he said. When I came to you, brothers. So Paul's method of reaching to people, it was to go where people are. It didn't wait for people to hear about him. It didn't wait for people to be aware of him or to look for him in order to win souls for Jesus. But he was going where people are. As you can hear what he said, when I came to you. He had to go where people are. So what does that mean to you and I in this morning? It doesn't mean that going where people are, it has to be only in a far distance. Going, people, going where people are, it has to be in the area of contact. What do I mean by the area of contact? The area of contact may mean that you and I, we can reach to the people who are close to us. It can be in a workplace. It can be at school. It can be in universities. It can be in the public place where you're traveling. It can be through your friends. You can reach out. It can be in a neighborhood. You and I, we can win souls in the area of contact as well. The Apostle Paul said, when I came to you. Now let's see how did Apostle Paul went to the people. Listen to what he said. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony of our Father. When the Apostle Paul went to them, he didn't go with the fancy languages to them. He didn't try to impress them. He didn't try to come with impressive, impressive speech to them. He didn't come to them trying that is, that is clever or clever word to them in order to reach them to Christ. But he said, I came to you with the, proclaim the proclaiming God. He was proclaiming God to them. He wants to reach God to the people of Corinth. So you and I, if we ask ourselves in this morning, what can we do to reach the people? We can go where people are. And the people are always everywhere. Everywhere there are people. For you and I to reach the people, we have to go where the people are. You may not have, you may ask yourself, but I, I don't have a degree in this and that. But I'm not educa educated enough to speak to other people. You may say, but I don't have a diploma or degrees in theology. It's not about that. The Apostle Paul said, I came to you proclaiming the testimony about God. If you know your God, you can share to others. The Apostle Paul said, when I came to you. And when we go to people, we have to go with a deep concern of souls. Deep concern. Point two, his message. What was his message? Uh, we see in verse 2 to verse 4. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except to Jesus and his work. His message was based on Jesus Christ. When the Apostle Paul went there, 
The only motivation, the only message that brought him to the people in Corinth, it was Jesus. It was Jesus Christ. When you and I, we go out, we reach the people, we go with the name of Jesus. We bring Jesus to the people. Because there are many people who have never heard about Jesus. When we go out, we go with Jesus. Now listen to what he said again. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and his work. He, went the, he, brought, he brought the message of Jesus and he also spoke about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Now the Apostle Paul he was bringing them to, the, to see the work of the cross. On the cross is when our sins were forgiven. On the cross is when Christ reconciled sinner to himself. On the cross is when Jesus said it's finished. On the cross is when Jesus declared you and I to be righteous on the cross. He brought the message of the cross to them. He brought the message of the cross. Is there on the cross is when Jesus take away our sins. On the cross is when God, the wrath of God was satisfied on the cross. You and I, when we reach out family, we bring the message of Jesus Christ. Paul said, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Christ Jesus and him crucified. And the other way that he came to the people, well, he said in verse 3, I came to you in weakness, and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive word, but with a demonstration of the spirit power. When he went there, he said, I came to you with a fear. He didn't want to take the glory on himself because he knew that God deserved all the glory. Even to say he was even trembling. That is, is coming to preach the gospel of Jesus. It was not about him. It was not about his glory. But it's about Jesus. In this morning you can ask me. What can I do to win souls in this world? Or what can I do to win souls here in Australia? You have to go where people are. The Apostle Paul's message. His, his method was to go where people are. And his message was based on Christ. Because you and I, we have a precious word of God. And that is Jesus Christ. We preach Jesus crucified. We tell people about why he died for us. It's not good enough to tell people about the Savior. But make them aware to know about the seriousness of sin to realize the importance of a need of a Savior. The Savior is Jesus Christ. He died for our sin. The Apostle's message, his method was to go where people are. That is you and I we have to do, is to reach where people are. And this message was based on Christ Jesus. Point three is motive. What was the Apostle Paul's motive? Verse, four, verse 5. You can read there with me. So that your faith might not rest on man's wisdom, but on God's power. The motive of the Apostle Paul reaching to the, to the city of Corinth so that the people will have their faith in God. Not the faith in themselves. There are people today in this world, they are worshipping trees. They have a faith in trees. There are people with a faith in fish. They worship fish. Some of the people worship themselves. But the Apostle Paul, he came to this city and he even said to them, so that your faith may not rest on man's wisdom, 
but in God is power. So you and I, we are called in this morning to win souls. We are called to reach to the lost. And when we go, we go with the deep concern because there are people who are there who are needing Jesus. I want to tell you something. Sometimes I wish, I think I said this before in South Africa. Sometimes I wish, Christian, we must refocus or zoom, zooming, and think and think about the seriousness of heaven and hell. When you look around, you'll see people look happy. Today, when we meet people, we say, this is a good, good man, good guy, good. But you know what? There are many people are good, yes. But inside, they need Christ. They need Jesus. And we need to reach to them. In South Africa, the place called Pete Marisberg, there was a lady in the church. Um, she was really excited about the word, and she wanted to give her life to Christ. But she wanted to have first the approval of her husband. She called her husband. She, I mean, she tested her husband. She said, I want to give my life to Christ. And the husband said, if you try, I kill you. If you try, I kill you, and don't come back in my house. So that lady, she didn't give her life to Christ. She didn't. When she went back, not even a far distance, she had an accident, she crashed, and she died. How do we know that? When they were trying to look at the phone to see the contacts of next of, next of kin, people look at the messages. It was like a five minutes before, before the accident. She was saying, I want to give my life to Christ. Family, there are people who need Jesus. There are people who need Jesus, and you and I, we have to reach them. I just want to remind you, in the world, there is 7 billion of population. There are 10%, these are a very true Christian, 10% in this world. And there are 20% of this group, this we call a nominal Christians. Nominal Christians are the people, are Christians who go to church when he's wedding, goes to church when there is event, when it's Christmas, is when they come to church. But the other day, they have nothing to do with church. But if you call, you ask them, who are, are you Christian? They will say, yes, I'm a Christian. But they only come to church when it's Christmas, when there is Easter, is when they come to church. But these people need someone to reach them. And they are 40%. This group of people are the people who have they've heard the gospel, but no respond. You tell them about Christ, you tell them about the goodness of God, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. And they are 30%. This group, they've never heard a gospel before. You tell them about Jesus, they have no idea of what you are saying. The question may be, why are we not reaching when we have the truth? I will tell you some reason. There are few reasons of that. One of the reasons we don't reach to people is because we have a fear of failure. If I try, is this person going to accept? Is going to welcome me? Ah, maybe not. Fear of failure. And that is not from God. Doubt in your own ability. You think you can't. You think if you try, it won't work. You are doubting yourself. Fear in your own ability. Oh, the serious one. Maybe not living in, a, in the committed Christian life. Maybe we don't live in Christian committed life. Maybe we're not committed. Because commitment is just simple. It's a person who sacrifices. It's a thought to sacrifice. That is commitment. 
And it's also a practical sacrifice. We do it all the time. Maybe we're not living in Christian, uh, we're not living in a Christian committed life. That's why we don't want to reach sometimes. Another thing is, afraid of upset, upsetting people. We don't want to upset people. They have their own time. I don't want to tell them about Christ. If we speak about a lot of things, that, it, that is okay. These are the few things that stop us to go to speak about Jesus Christ. Or oh, sometimes we are afraid of being judged. They will judge me. They will think I'm religious when I speak about Christ. No, you're not. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. The other reason, maybe, we don't have a deep concern of lost soul. Maybe that can be also the reason for you and I not to reach out. But family, firstly, I would like just to ask a question. Is that okay? Yes. yes. Okay, that's good. If someone give you eighty-six thousand and four hundred dollars per day, it's a lot. And they ask you, if you finish this money today, I will give you the next one. I will add the same amount tomorrow. What can you do with this money? Whom shall I ask? Anyone can volunteer. I'll ask my friend Todd. He's a very good friend of mine. What can you do if someone gives you 86000 and $400 per day? What can you do if you finish it? Yes. For what? Spend. <laughs> Buy a property. Deposit in property. If it's finished today, you put give it mission. All the answers are really good. I can even do those things. But the truth is this: each day, God gives you and I eighty six thousand and four hundred seconds to live per day. What are you doing with that time? If it was money, we, we, we can use it. We can use it to make the giver happy so it can give us another time. Another time. But every day God gives the same amount, same second, 86,400 86, Second to live per day. And what are we doing for his glory? Because if that time finish, from midnight, he gives you another time for the second day. What are we doing for his glory? God wants you and I to save him. He wants you and I to save him. And last question I want to ask you, family, is this. Just, this is very simple. How many people do you know who do not go to church. They're not Christian. How many people do you know, roughly? Can I ask Todd again? Because it's quick to open. Can I ask you again, please? How many people do you know they do not go to church? They are not born again. They are even atheists. How many? Yeah. Rough number, roughly. How many? Like a 10? Yeah, personally, yeah. Four? 14. 14. Let's say 15. Sorry, ma'am. Can I? You don't know. 100. Another one, another guess, please. This way now, please. 15. Okay. So the truth is this. Under this roof, you and I, we are. There are three people. Three people. Who knows 130 people? Three people knowing 130 people who are not born again, who are not going to church. And what are we doing, Christians?
What about all of us? We know thousands and thousands. But where are they? Your assignment and my assignment, please, let's reach out to them. Let's tell them about Jesus. Let's bring them to church. Let's bring them to our Bible studies. We are called by God. As I said before, family, if you ask yourself what you can do, you can go. You can reach out. You can go. As the apostle says, when I came to you, you can go. Point two, you can share. The apostle said, I came to you with the message of Christ. You can go, point one. Point two, you can share. And point three, you can lead. He said, so that your faith might not rest in man's wisdom, but in God's power. You can go. You can share and you can lead someone to Jesus. Please stand with me, family. Stand with me. I give, my, I give myself away. Stand with me, family. This time is the time that we are going to speak to God. We're going to speak to God and we ask ourselves, why am I not doing what God wants me to do? Nothing you and I will take to heaven, but we can lead more souls to heaven. I will take nothing. What a joy is that? Someone stand with you and say, Todd, you know what? I'm here because you call me to God. You and I, we are called to God. We are called to share. Can you imagine yourself, you are at home and you see your brother or your sister or your grandma, they don't know Christ. Every Sunday you walk to church, you leave them at home. Family, you have a task. God gave you a task and you and I, we have to finish our task. And one day you will stand before Christ and say, Christ will say to you, well done. Well done. So today, I want to ask you family. I want to ask you family. Is your choice? Is your choice? But I ask you, if you are here, you said, I want God to use me. I want God to use me in this year. This is the year of multiplication. This is the year of fruitfulness. And today you say, God, please use me. Use me, O oh God. Use me the way you use others. Use me, O oh Father. I want to be used by you, Jesus. Today you say, God, I want to be used by you.